we're live already yes <laughs> uh, i'm happy to uh, welcome you at the first event organized by uh, seven or eight jugs uh, so java users groups from poland uh, this is our first initiative maybe not last that depends on you uh, it's great uh, that uh, you made it to, to uh, join us. And uh, as you can see, and if I'm see it also right, you can see all the uh, guys that are uh, and mates <laughs> uh, uh, that uh, made it happen. Uh, so uh, let me just uh, welcome uh, uh, everyone here. Uh, so, uh, uh, let me just uh, bring you uh, which uh, Java users groups uh, are uh, behind that. Uh, so, we have uh, Bitgosh Juk uh, that I'm uh, representing. We have J Session from Bialystok represented by, by Mukash. Uh, we have Lublin Jack that is uh, not represented uh, today, unfortunately. Uh, we have True Miasto uh, uh, Jack and uh, Michał uh, from Gdańsk. Uh, we have Silesia Juk and Marcin. Uh, we have uh, Warsaw Juk uh, and Wojtek. We have Wrocław Juk uh, with Sebastian, and we have Zielona Góra Juk with Magda. Uh, so, uh, so today's uh, presentation will be led by Frank Del Porto, and we will hear uh, from him about Java and the Raspberry Pi uh, uh, programming. Uh, but that's uh, not everything. We have some prizes for you. Uh, there are many ways to get them. Uh, so we have four Raspberry Pi. So after this presentation, when you'll be uh, hungry to get programming on those uh, embedded devices, you will have the ability uh, to use one uh, of that kit. Uh, we have uh, Frank's books, uh, so you will have more detailed information about how to start. And if you need some IDE uh, uh, to use, uh, there will be some JetBrains licenses. And how to get them? Uh, so first way uh, uh, to get the Raspberry Pi uh, uh, is uh, a little contest about our sponsor, uh, sponsor of the uh, Raspberry Pi kits, and please be uh, prepared. Uh, yep. So uh, on the next slide, the okay, questions about our sponsor, and the first pe person who posts the, pro the the good answer to these questions on our chat, the first one who pops up will get the will get the first Raspberry Pi. So uh, let's go right now. Okay. So that's the question. Yeah, that's the question. Two questions that you have to answer. The first person that uh, puts the question on the chat uh, wins. First question is, in which year Mobika, our sponsor, was founded? And the second, in which Polish cities Mobika has its office in? Uh, so the first person who will answer and put this answer on the chat of the uh, our uh, channels uh, will win the first starter kit. Uh, okay, so uh, go ahead, but that's not the only way uh, to win prizes today. Uh, as your feedback is uh, very valuable for us, uh, uh, we will uh, provide you with the survey at the end uh, of our uh, meeting uh, in our social media. <coughs> you will have the link. Uh, and the, uh, the ones that will provide the most valuable uh, feedback, uh, we will choose uh, two of uh, uh, those uh, authors and we'll uh, honor them uh, with the uh, two Raspberry Pis. So that's the, so that's the second uh, way to uh, win the prizes. Uh, but wait, there's more. Uh, we can we have another way uh, and there's another contest that you can uh, uh, be involved with uh, <coughs> if you will be active on our uh, 
today's meeting. So if you will have more uh, comments or questions to Frank, uh, then we will uh, also honor you with the prizes. The prizes are the JetBrains uh, products licenses that we have. We have many of them, so uh, don't be worried and try to be active as much as you can. Uh, and the uh, last way uh, is a contest that will be uh, um, described by, the, uh, by Frank later. So be uh, uh, careful on listening for his presentation. And in that contest, the first prize is uh, also Rubsberry Pie, but uh, supported with the Frank's uh, uh, book uh, on uh, programming on Rubsberry Pie. And the second and third places uh, will also get the Frank's uh, book. So that's the way that you can win prizes today. It's worth to be active. It's worth to, uh, to uh, 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 listen carefully. And it's worth to, to uh, be active even after our, uh, our meeting. OK, uh, so uh, time flies and uh, we I guess we have some answers, uh, uh, so let's uh, let's check uh, what we will uh, who will uh, win the prize. And we will review the, answer, the, the answers uh, in, when Frank uh, will start his presentation, uh, mm -hmm. because we need to check who was the prize and if the answer is uh, provided, it was a proper one. So I okay. think we so, so, we can so go. first 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 you have give a proper answer and be first <laughs> uh, exactly and in That's the in the last condition. yeah great and in the last uh, few words I would like to uh, uh, tell you about our Slack channel there is a JVM Poland Slack channel that you can you are we would be happy to uh, invite you uh, to as it's the way to grow our community to, to uh, have the uh, channel of communication between all the people involved in uh, JVM uh, in Poland. So that's the way uh, we can uh, get closer together. Uh, so uh, take a look uh, at the link uh, that we provided and join if you if you were pleased. And I guess that's uh, all we have as an introduction. Uh, let me just uh, uh, give a voice to Frank and his presentation. Okay, thanks a lot. Good evening, everyone. Evening if you're from Poland or from the region. Um, I'm happy to be here as this uh, jug, even if it's virtual and I'm in Belgium and you're in Poland. Um, I will be talking about the Raspberry Pi and using Java and Java FX on it. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Frank Laporte. I live in Belgium. Uh, I do a lot of blogging on webtechy.be and fuji.io. If you don't know the second site, that's a, real, uh, a new one uh, with all articles and information about Java. Definitely take a look at it. And every day there's a new, at least one new article about Java, about the environment, about the tools, uh, and what you can do with it. Uh, I have been programming since I was 10 years old, uh, a long time ago. Um, and it all started with this Commodore 64, uh, as a lot of people of my age uh, started with. Um, I work at uh, Todi, a small Belgian company, a startup where we built this uh, autonomous robot driven by uh, AI and machine learning. Uh, to do the grass mowing, which is the first product which is uh, to be launched in March, the official first version. Um, but I also am a volunteer at Coder Dojo. Um, if you don't know it, it's a club for kids uh, where they learn to program, uh, but not really the focus on programming, but the focus is on compu computational thinking, uh, working together, uh, presenting your work. Um, if you're facing a problem, work together, ask to your colleagues. So for kids from, from seven to 18, um, but the coaches there are volunteers and they bring their own knowledge to these events. And that's where I got into contact with um, Arduino and Raspberry Pi because coaches were using those to uh, do electronic experiments and they brought it to these events. Um, and that's where I first got into contact with these amazing stuff, which is 
pretty ex uh, inexpensive uh, and, and on the other hand, uh, very powerful. Um, I wanted to use this Raspberry Pi to build this user interface for the drum boot of my son. So it's uh, some toggle buttons and you can control these relay boards which are stacked on top of a Raspberry Pi to control different lights at 220 volt, 15 volt, 5 volt. Um, there's also an Arduino attached to it and the Arduino is controlling uh, LED strips um, where you can address every LED, uh, LED uh, separately. Uh, and all this is controlled by a Raspberry Pi um, with a touch interface and a web interface because we can toggle these uh, red signal lights uh, from downstairs when it's time to come uh, to the dinner table. Uh, so we don't have to yell from down the stairs uh, that he hears us. Now, all this uh, resulted in a first article, a uh, four-pager for Magpie magazine, um, and then resulted in a book. Uh, so I have uh, here this book. So it's really a paper book also available, uh, over 300 pages with examples uh, of Java code uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Um, it includes uh, getting started if you're new to Java, but I guess uh, the audience now today is experienced Java users. Uh, so uh, for them, it's mainly how you can use your Java knowledge to do other stuff and control electronics. So for instance, this eight by eight LED matrix uh, display, how you can put uh, text on it or a LED segment display like you find in clocks or this kind of display with um, the weather feeds uh, pulled from a REST API. Uh, there's even spring examples running on a, on a Raspberry Pi uh, and Swagger to control a LED or read the state of a button. Um, and this is then the final um, project, which I also used in the drum boot, where you have this Java FX uh, user interface. Um, it's using Mosquito, a queue in between. It's uh, controlling an Arduino and all uh, that through a Raspberry Pi. Um, that last example I will also show in this presentation. And I also have some interviews in the book about Java, the state of Java, why you would or can use uh, Java on the Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> And of course, the sources are available on GitHub. Now, let's uh, start with the start. And what is a Raspberry Pi? If you don't know it, it's a very small PC, uh, everything on one little board. So the biggest one is nine centimeters. Um, and you see that you have a lot of pins and connectors. And the smallest one is six centimeters and a half, uh, an average. So these are the main types. You have the A, the B. Uh, the B4 is the latest, let's call it, the, the biggest one, the most used one. Uh, and depending on the amount of memory, you have them for 40, 60, 80 euros uh, in average, depending on the shop where you buy them. Um, but last year, there were some new releases of these uh, Raspberry Pis. Uh, so uh, on the 19th of October, and I will never forget it because it was my birthday. So especially for my birthday, uh, they launched the new Compute Module 4. And the Compute Module 4 is a bit special because you see um, there are no connectors on it. Uh, the connectors actually are on the bottom. And the idea of it is that you uh, use it in your own electronics project. So you build a board around it. And there are 32 versions of this compute module four, depending on the amount of memory, uh, if there's uh, Wi-Fi on board, uh, these kind of uh, configurations. Um, and you can buy also an uh, input-output board. So you see that it's, it's a big board with all the possible connections which are available on this compute module. And the idea is that you buy such a compute module and an I.O. board together, that you start experimenting with it. And when your project is finished, you build your own electronics uh, baseboard with only the connections you need for your specific project. So for instance, for um, uh, if you're developing a machine and you want your specific uh, connections on this board, you can build that, but put the compute module on top of it and you have your full PC uh, inside your own uh, electronics project. Another launch uh, last year was the Raspberry Pi 400. That's actually the same thing as the Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigabyte, uh, but they redesigned uh, the PCB, the board, to fit it in the existing Raspberry Pi official keyboard. And you see that you have uh, a keyboard with all the connections at the back. So the only thing you have to add is a mouse uh, and a screen 
and a power supply, of course, and you can get started. So this is a full PC inside a keyboard. Now, um, where did we see this before? Uh, a keyboard with everything inside it. Yes, indeed. My very first computer was exactly the same form factor. I have to admit that the design now is a, a lot better. Um, but 35 years ago, I used this Commodore 64 and these connectors on the back um, to control my Lego trains. So I had this um, control center inside my computer to start and stop my Lego trains. Um, and I could do that with some uh, cheap electronic components connected to the back. And that's exactly the same thing you can do with the Raspberry Pi 4. You have this 40 pin connector at the back um, where you can connect a lot of uh, stuff. Now, uh, there are some big differences, of course, in this 35 years. Um, there's a lot more memory, um, but the biggest comparison is the price. If you recalculate the price of that Commodore 64 to the current cost, it would be about 1,500 euros, while you now have the Raspberry Pi 400 for under 100 euros. Um, what is also a big difference is the screen. This is what I was programming 35 years ago. And this is what I was doing with the Raspberry Pi 4 that I used when I was writing the book. So I have this 4K display attached to it. You can even uh, have two of these screens uh, connected to a Raspberry Pi 4. I had two Visual Studio codes open. I had an Arduino EDA open, uh, all that on one. A PC of, I think, uh, 45 euros. Um, so the screen is, uh, I think, uh, 10 times more expensive than the computer itself. Now, um, why would you use Java on the Raspberry Pi? I get asked that uh, a lot. Uh, wasn't the Raspberry Pi designed for Python? Um, actually, it was. So when they were designing this board, they wanted to have a fruity name. Uh, you had the Apple. Uh, which was already popular at that time. So they wanted to have something similar. So they came up with a fruit being the Raspberry and they were using Python and the number Pi. So it became the Raspberry Pi. But uh, to my opinion, it could also have been the Raspberry J or Java or whatever, because Java works uh, just as well uh, on this little board. Uh, why would you use Java if you're already Java, uh, a Java user? Uh, simply, you can you can do it. You have your knowledge. You you know your language. You can do the same thing on the Raspberry Pi. And on the other hand, if you combine it with electronics, you will learn a lot of new stuff of how you use electronics, how you control it. Um, how you uh, interface with it. That's all new stuff. If you're just a software uh, programmer and you come into this hardware world. Um, I don't have to defend Java here, but uh, there are a lot of people who are saying yeah, Java, Java is too old, it's outdated, it's not evolving. Hmm? I don't think so, because then they compare it to Python or, or JavaScript. But if you look at this timeline, Python is actually older than Java. And uh, JavaScript, um, Qt, they are all the same age. Um, and since we have this six month release cycle from a few years ago, uh, we have also a very fast evolving Java, uh, which introduces a lot of new tools, uh, new methods, uh, which allow you to program faster and also have an impact on how performant Java is on these uh, embedded devices. Now, uh, a fun fact, uh, these charts that I show you here, I needed them for my book and I started creating them first. I thought Excel or Photoshop, but I'm a Java programmer. So I just created them as Java FX applications where you have some enums uh, with um, the values that you want to show on this timeline and just take a screenshot and use them in this presentation. So uh, if you are a Java developer and you've never used Java FX, uh, Take a look at it, it's very handy, even if it's just uh, to create uh, some kind of, of uh, image. Uh, last summer, I had the chance to write an article for the jo uh, Oracle Java magazine about this. Um, and it's also the example we are gonna use uh, at the end of this presentation. Um, and it was a very popular article, uh, even a lot of Oracle people and, and Java developers uh, and uh, discovered a new world that you can use Java on this small PC, that you can combine it with electronics and that you can do uh, pretty fun stuff with it. Now, if you have a Raspberry Pi, it's just some 
piece of electronics, you need to add an operating system. There are a lot of them. Uh, you have even operating systems which are only uh, with uh, vintage, vintage games, for instance. Uh, but we are using in these examples the official Raspberry Pi operating system OS, which was formerly used, uh, named Raspbian OS. It's based on Debian, so it's a Linux system, 32 bits. Um, and if you go for the full version, you have OpenGDK 11 pre-installed, so you can immediately start with Java. Uh, there is also a 64-bit uh, version of this operating system. Uh, you can already find it. It's not finalized yet and not official release, but it is available. Um, so if you go for this full Raspberry Pi OS operating system, you get a lot of pre-installed tools. Um, also for programming, you see this is a screenshot of the programming section of the pre-installed uh, programs. Um, the Visual Studio is not Visual Studio Code is not part of the pre-installed uh, components or programs, but you can easily add it, uh, download it from the website because a few months ago uh, Microsoft decided to also release Visual Studio Code for ARM and ARM64 processors, so for the Raspberry Pi, um, and it's very handy because you can use exactly the same. Um, uh, plugins as you use uh, on PC. So Visual Studio Code with the Java extension packs gives you full Java development EDA on the uh, Raspberry Pi. IntelliJ uh, has no ARM version yet, so uh, that's not something you can use uh, on the Raspberry. So uh, we have this new Raspberry Pi board. We have uh, an SD card with Raspberry Pi OS. We uh, put it in this uh, little PC and we start it up. First thing we do is go open the terminal and do a Java minus version. And as you can see, uh, Java 11 uh, is installed. So we have everything here uh, to get started. If you want to do a Java FX, a user interface, um, there are a few possibilities. So Java FX is not included anymore um, in the releases of the JDK. But there are some uh, companies who provide versions of the GDK with uh, Java FX, and Liberica is one of them. Um, it's perfect for uh, getting started and doing some uh, example projects. Um, getting the uh, this version of Liberica is just downloading a dev file and uh, running some commands. Um, and then if you do a Java min versions, you see that you have a new version in use uh, and inside is also the GFX, uh, Java FX. Um, another option is uh, taking the, the latest um, open GFX version provided by Gluon. Uh, Gluon is the main contributor and maintainer of uh, Java FX. And on their website, they have for the latest uh, versions, the ongoing releases, uh, ongoing versions, they have also uh, an ARM version specifically for the Raspberry Pi. Um, and these latest versions give you some new uh, possibilities. So one of them is direct rendering, uh, which means that uh, you can remove the whole um, uh, window layout that you don't see anything uh, anymore about uh, Raspberry Pi, but just run your program like you have kiosk mode. Uh, if you want to run an application that uh, they, uh, the users cannot open the browser or do something else, they only can use your application. That's perfectly possible with Java FX on uh, Raspberry Pi. If you look into this video on the right, that's SpaceFX, uh, developed by Gerrit Grunwald. Um, so it's a little Java FX game, and this uh, video is actually uh, the game running on a Raspberry Pi at 60 frames per second. So you see it's a very smooth animation, a very smooth playback uh, of this uh, video game. So that's also possible uh, on the Raspberry Pi. And I've done some other experiments, um, like for instance, Java FX 3D. Um, it's one of the very first examples of 3D with Java from many years ago, but also this you can run on a Raspberry Pi. So this is just a, an object drone uh, which is created in Java and with uh, the keys you can uh, rotate it. And uh, another very fun thing uh, with Java is FXGL. Uh, by Almas. Um, it's um, a library to create games uh, with Java. 
Um, I use it on my Raspberry Pi to do some performance uh, validation. So this is uh, 30 dots moving at random uh, speed and uh, random locations. And these end up at uh, around 30 frames per second animation speed with very low uh, CPU uh, usage, usage and memory usage. But you can build uh, complete games with FXGL uh, on the Raspberry Pi and, for instance, control them with buttons or add some LEDs if you want to make a flipper cast or an arcade game. <clears throat> That's all something you can do uh, on this uh, Raspberry Pi. Now, um, if we uh, are talking about this electronics, that's the real power, in my opinion, of the Raspberry Pi. It's this header, this 40 pins where you can connect stuff. Um, to know what these pins can do, I've created a little uh, Maven library. Um, and this Maven library contains uh, some enums with the types of pins and uh, which pins are actually on the Raspberry Pi. So the latest Raspberry Pis have a 40 pin header. And if you look into this, so some of these pins give you a constant 3 volt 3, others 5 volt uh, or, or a ground. And the other ones, you can control them uh, by software. So you can put them on or off, uh, do some communication uh, with it, uh, and control uh, devices. Uh, by the way, this is also a JavaFX application using this Java library to visualize what's inside it. Now. Um, what is a pin? What is a GPIO? It's a general purpose input output pin. A long word to just tell you it can either be a one or a zero. We are in computer terms. Uh, so it's a true or a false. And if you translate that to electronics, it's either a three volt three or zero volt. Uh, if you put a LED on it, it's on or off, a push or a release. And um, as you can see on this picture, there are also some handy boards that you can buy for uh, very cheap and that you slide over these pins to find out which uh, pin is a voltage pin, which is a numbered pin, um, so that you can uh, use them in your uh, projects. Um, it's not just one and zero. If you use it at certain speeds, uh, you can have uh, some interfacing protocols. So you have I2C, you have SPI, you have UART. All these are kinds of uh, protocols of how you talk with uh, electronics, for instance, to control such an 8x8 uh, LED matrix, or to connect to a chip, or to have serial communication with an Arduino. Um, all these are possible uh, with the Raspberry Pi, and certain libraries will help you um, to, do, to set this up and use this. So if you want to start with such a thing, uh, buy yourself an electronic starter kit. Uh, ask it for your Valentine. I don't care. Make sure you have one because it's a new world uh, opening for you. And uh, you have them from 20 euros and upwards, depending uh, if there is a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino inside it. But just make sure you have a lot of LEDs, a lot of resistors, cables, uh, a breadboard, and then you can uh, get started and do all the stuff that I will show you. Um, we will be using a few basic components in this presentation. Uh, one is a LED. Uh, a LED gives you light. Uh, you put a bit of power on it. You have some special versions. You have an RGB LED. Um, the most simple one is with three pins for red, green, and blue. Um, the other one is in a strip. And if you look uh, for the right kind of strip, that means that every LED in this strip is addressable. So you can say, I want the 10th LED to be blue and the 11th to be green. And then you can start building very fancy projects and uh, effects. Now, if you want to use a resistor, uh, you have to be aware that the Raspberry Pi gives you 3.3 volts. Most resistors uh, have a lower uh, need. So if you give them too much voltage, uh, they will not break immediately, but they could burn. So you need a resistor in between. Now to calculate uh, how which value you need for that resistor, again, I have this, uh, I explained this also in the book, a small uh, Java library, uh, which explains you the colors uh, on these uh, LEDs. Uh, on these resistors, excuse me. Um, and if you put them in the right order uh, in this tool, it will tell you that, for instance, this uh, resistor in this picture is a one uh, mega ohm uh, resistor. And on the other side, you have this little calculation tool that if you have a Raspberry Pi of 3 volt 3 and you have a LED of 2 volt 2 uh, with a certain ampere, 
what uh, resistor you have to put uh, in between. For your info, in the most uh, uh, electronic starter kits, you have a 330 ohm or 220 ohm resistor. You can use those. That means that your LED will be less bright, uh, but that's not an issue. You will see, still see it. Uh, uh, light up. Now, um, this um, Maven library that you saw in the pr previous slide, I used it to create even an app for it. And the fun part is, um, if you're not interested in all this electronics, but you want to start using Java and JavaFX to build mobile apps, uh, this is the uh, post where you uh, have to be. Um, it is a small JavaFX application, which um, is using uh, is published on GitHub, and with five different GitHub actions, it builds a native application for both Windows, uh, Mac, uh, Linux, and then it pushes also a version to the App Store of Apple and uh, to the Google Play Store, all uh, controlled by GitHub. So. The only thing you have to do is build your application once, you run it on your PC to test it, and if you're happy with it, you push it uh, to GitHub, and a few minutes later, you have uh, native applications for op operating systems, and it's even pushed um, into the Play Store uh, for testing. Um, one of the very uh, big hidden gems of Java and JavaFX is that you can do really powerful um, mobile application development. Uh, so you can find it in the App Store. It's for free, so uh, I don't earn a thing if you uh, download it. Now let's start with a small uh, experiment. I have here a button which is connected to a pin, so it gets 3 volt 3 and it goes back to a pin, and I have an output pin and going through a resistor and a LED. Now uh, we're using uh, these pins, not that important to understand, but this is how it looks like. So if you start doing these experiments with um, uh, electronics, uh, you have these breadboards and some cables and you can uh, plug everything in. Now, this is what it looks like uh, if I glue that breadboard on my screen and I use the terminal just to test it. So I tell to my uh, Raspberry Pi that I want to use this pin three as an output pin and then by sending a one or a zero, so putting it on a high voltage or low voltage, I can see that my LED goes on and off. This is just terminal. We're not in the Java site yet. Now for uh, the button, I can do the same. So I can uh, say to my uh, Raspberry Pi, I want to use pin five as an input pin. Now I can read the state of this uh, pin. So it's not pressed, it's a zero. And if you press on the button and you read it, it's a one. So this is very basic uh, usage of electronics uh, on the Raspberry Pi. If we go into uh, Java, we can actually do exactly the same as we did in the terminal and is execute these terminal commands. So you see, for instance, here, this is plain Java, no libraries, no dependencies, just using uh, standard Java to execute some commands uh, like uh, telling this pin three to be an output pin and then toggle it 10 times. So if we look how this works on the Raspberry Pi, um, we have this simple uh, Java file with this code. You see, we don't need any imports um, or whatever. And because this is Java 11, we can run this Java file without compiling it. That's another very handy feature of Java 11. If you have a small uh, Java file or class that you want to test, that you can actually just run it. You can just start it. So you see, we just uh, called this, this Java file, um, let it run, and it toggles our LED 10 times uh, on and off. Very basic, I know, uh, no rocket science. Uh, this is not part of this presentation either, um, but I just want to show you how you can easily, uh, with a single Java file, uh, learn something new on, on the uh, Raspberry Pi, okay? Now let's introduce some real Java and the library being Pi4j. Uh, Python for Java, uh, Raspberry Pi for, for Java. Um, it's an uh, I.O. library which uh, facilitates uh, programming uh, electronic components uh, for the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. So it's a library inside your Java application 
which will call native libraries uh, on the Raspberry Pi, which talk to the GPIOs and then control these GPIOs or grids or whatever. Hmm. Now, um, this uh, Pi4j project exists already since 2012. Um, and currently, uh, we are in version 1.3, which was just released uh, last month. Um, it is the last version which will support Java 8, but it was created because there were some new ra uh, Raspberry Pis uh, which were not supported yet. Um, and uh, it also has an upgrade script to uh, update one of the dependencies uh, so that everyone can get started also with this latest Raspberry Pis. Um, there is also a 1.4 version um, which is now being tested, which will be built for Java 11. Um, and this Pi4j project supports a lot of electronic components, but on the other hand, because it supports so many things, it's uh, difficult to maintain. And that's why there were not that many uh, releases uh, since the start of this project. And there's one big uh, problem with this uh, library, and that is it relies on wiring Pi. This is the underlying um, uh, framework used uh, to talk with these uh, GPIOs. Uh, which, and it got deprecated last year, uh, two years ago even. Um, and it also has some confusing pin numbers. You see in this drawing, you have uh, the pin number, you have a BCM number and a wiring Pi number. And a lot of people get a bit scared of, of using these pins because of this uh, confusion. But uh, that's why we have schemes like uh, this. So there is a lot of work ongoing. Uh, for a completely new Pi4j version, the version 2, um, which is uh, Java 11 and, and higher, which uses the modular approach, um, also supports all Raspberry Pi boards, and the native library being used has been replaced by Pi GPIO. And because of the completely new architecture of this library, uh, even replacing Pi GPIO, if it would ever be needed, will be very easy to do as it's taking one uh, part out of it and uh, just keeping all the rest. Uh, it will not support so many devices, but the device support will be uh, separated into other projects in other uh, libraries. So this Pi, uh, G, uh, Pi GPIO is also written in C. It's also um, uh, available for the Raspberry Pi already a long time. Uh, and it's used uh, by using GNI to bind it into uh, the project. And the confusing numbering also of the pins has been removed because it uses the standard Broadcom uh, numbering. This is the yeah, a very big uh, scheme, but um, it illustrates that this new library is really separated. Every uh, block has an interface and an implementation, and it's separated so that you can really take out the modules that you really need uh, for your project, or just update these uh, modules which uh, you want to extend for specific functionality. Um, we will also be using JavaFX in this presentation. So uh, let me introduce you Hans Solo, uh, Gerrit Grunwald, who has created this TilesFX library. If you ever need to create some dashboard-like JavaFX application, definitely take a look at this uh, library. Now, this is the uh, example project that we will create. It's the same as in the Oracle um, uh, Java Magazine uh, article. Um, and it's using uh, this Pi4j version 1.3. So it's just a dependency to be added uh, to your project. And you have to in uh, initiate one time your uh, GPIO controller, um, which will be talking to all these uh, pins. Now, if you want to use a let, it's just asking to this controller to provision us a digital output pin. We can give it a name, we can give it the pin number and the start state. And then turning a let on and off has really become um, a Java object way of doing it. Eh? We put it high or low. And uh, what's be behind it to control really this pin is all handled by either the library and the underlying framework. For a pin, an input pin, a button, uh, we ask our controller to give us an input pin, we give it the number, um, and we can attach an event listener. And then we come really into the Java code. Um, we can extend uh, or implement the default uh, listener um, and extend it with our own functionality. In this case, every time the button is pressed, we just store it into a series with um, uh, the, the timestamp and the value. 
Um, and because we are using tiles FX uh, from Gary Trunwald, um, we can have some fancy tiles like a switch tile, uh, which toggles the LED. Uh, and we can have a chart tile to show the, the button changes. And if you combine all this together, then you end up with an application like this. So you see here my setup. Uh, I also have a distance sensor uh, in this uh, example. So toggling the button um, on the screen, then you see that the LED goes uh, on and off. And if you push the button, then you see on the lower uh, part of the screen that the chart is uh, has some extra points. Every second, this uh, program also does a measurement of the distance sensor, and that's what you see uh, in the upper screen. And all this is running on uh, a Raspberry Pi with, uh, I think the screen costs about 60 or 70 euros. It's a seven inch screen and it's even touch. So you can do the same, exactly the same uh, by controlling uh, on the screen. Okay. Um, just a fun experiment, two of these distance sensors and a distance a tile of uh, tiles of fix, and you have something like this. Small internet, so. <laughs> okay, let's uh, move on and uh, go to a first example of uh, Pi4j version two. Uh, it's a bit the same uh, setup with a button and a LED. By the way, uh, the version two of Pi4j already has a website, uh, which moved last week to GitHub. Also, um, we use also GitHub Actions now to publish it. Uh, with their new action flow, it's really handy. Uh, go check it out if you didn't do that yet. Now for Pi4j, you see we added a lot of commands in this uh, example code that you can very easily understand how it works. Also here we need a context, where is Pi4j running? What is the provider, what is the board? Uh, it's all handled uh, inside this new auto context. And for instance, initializing a button um, is a bit the new Java style um, where you have a builder. Uh, and you give it some properties that you want. Um, and also here we have a listener with a Lambda event um, style to handle every event state. Here we just count the, the times, the number of times that the button uh, is pressed. And for a LED, we have a LED also. Uh, we uh, have this config builder that we use again. Um, and as long as the button isn't pushed uh, five times, we have a toggling between high and low. Um, because we use this modular approach now, um, if you uh, package such an application, you don't end up with one jar file, but you end up with uh, only the jar files that you need for your project or that you added in the dependencies. So this also means that um, if you have a new version of your application, that you only need to replace the single jar file um, and that you have your latest version if you didn't change anything in the dependencies. The Maven file will also copy a run file into your project, into this uh, distribution uh, directory, so that you have everything uh, to start your application. So you just have to do a sudo run and uh, your application will start. I have one uh, extra uh, example I want you uh, to show you. Um, it's the one I use in the drum boot. It's with a mosquito queue. So what is a queue uh, if you never used a queue before? So you have, um, let's call it a post box somewhere in between. And you have a client which says to this post box, I want to receive messages. And on the other side, you have a sender which can send messages into this um, into this queue. Uh, and if you send a message into it, if you publish a message, it will go uh, to the client. This is a very simple approach, one on one. Uh, you don't really need a queue there, but the queue becomes a lot more powerful if you have different senders, different subscribers. Uh, some subscribers want to receive everything, another only wants to receive a specific uh, type of messages. All this becomes possible with the queue. And Mosquito is uh, just one example of a queue. You also have Rabbit and Kafora and others. But Mosquito is also uh, available um, and smooth running on the Raspberry Pi. And that's why I used uh, that one. Um, for this um, uh, example, 
Uh, I have the web browser running on a PC. I have on the Raspberry Pi the Mosquito, but also the application itself. Um, on the other side, you could also have another PC also running a Java a VIX application to also show uh, what's uh, happening through this Mosquito. But I also have an Arduino board, which is another type of uh, electronic components a microcontroller, which is also connected to this Mosquito through Wi-Fi and getting all the messages from this Mosquito queue. And what we are doing in this setup is everything goes to this Mosquito um, to start certain LED effects, LED strip effects, which are controlled by this Arduino. So the Arduino is the client receiving all these messages and handling uh, the LED effects or controlling uh, the LED effects. Now, uh, installing Mosquito on uh, a Raspberry Pi is very easy. It's just a sudo apt install and then uh, telling what uh, Mosquito application you want. In this case, I also install the clients uh, because that allows you to test everything uh, inside the terminal. So you can have a subscriber terminal and you can have a publisher and everything you uh, publish in one site, uh, in one terminal, you will see it uh, in the other uh, terminal. Um, and then um, I extended this example with a Java FX example, where um, it also shows you all the messages in the, in the list view which uh, get published, but you can also publish something from here. It ends up in the queue and you see it both in the terminal um, and in the Java FX application. Um, and then, yeah, the real power of Java is for me, Java FX, uh, to build user interfaces and not only um, uh, business like applications, but also something like this, which is uh, completely styled with CSS. Uh, again, a component of Gerrit Grunwald, this color selection wheels. Uh, so all these buttons are uh, just Java buttons, but with some CSS styling, um, they are completely not um, boring buttons anymore, but they are colored and, and they have some effects. Um, in this uh, Java VIX application or Java application, I also included Undertow, the web server, um, which allows you to have a web uh, page which is accessible from everywhere in your house and you can control certain stuff on your Raspberry Pi or even on the, on the Arduino uh, by just using uh, this queue. Now, if you combine all this, then you see that you have this uh, Java FX application. And if you select here the run effect, then you see that on the LED strip, we have this uh, one red light uh, LED going uh, through. We have a fading rainbow is uh, just cycling through all the colors. The speed can be uh, changed. And every effect that is selected here, you see on the screen that it's in the terminal shown uh, as a new message pushed uh, to this uh, message queue, to this mosquito queue. And at the bottom, you have the Arduino, which is receiving all these messages. And then you have the web interface, the red alert, come to the dinner table, um, is controlled uh, through this uh, web interface. Okay. I'm nearly finished. I showed what I wanted to show you. Um, what did I hope that you learn from, from, from this presentation is that Java and JavaFX on the Raspberry Pi really work. It's just uh, put it on it, run it, start it, and you have your Java version uh, working on it. I have done tests with Spring, with Quarkus. Um, it's just Java and you have your, run, your uh, Java virtual machine for the Raspberry Pi, so you can run it uh, exactly the same. Uh, Java FX is a bit special because it needs support for all the graphics drivers for all the different platforms, but uh, there are uh, specific implementations inside Java OpenJFX uh, for the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you combine all this with electronics, you really enter uh, into a new world where you uh, learn new stuff. Um, my previous company uh, where I worked, um, I had a lot of electronics colleagues and they were constantly talking about I2C and all these SPI and all these other protocols. And I those were new to me. And then by doing some very fun and simple experiments uh, on the Raspberry Pi, uh, I understood uh, what they needed and, and, and I could better talk to them and, and um, know what could be the limit of, of uh, data going too fast, for instance. 
Um, and it is because you're using Java and uh, you have this amazing uh, world of, of libraries uh, with minimal code, you can do a lot of uh, big things. Eh? So a Spring application, which is only a few classes and a few lines, gives you a database REST interface with Swagger, um, which runs perfectly smooth uh, on, the, on the Raspberry Pi. And there's a lot of uh, things that we can uh, look forward to uh, because there is a lot of involvement going on, uh, not only in Java and Java FX, but also into this native compilation where you have Graal VM um, building very small native applications, which starts in, in seconds or milliseconds. Uh, we have Pi4j and this new version two, which is coming. Uh, so there will be a lot of work uh, this year um, in this version two. Um, we are with a few people inside this project, but we will get support from a Swiss university uh, to push this proje project forward and a few students uh, will join this uh, project. Um, if you want to learn more, um, I invite you to my website, my blog, webtechie.be. Um, I'm pretty active on Twitter uh, following all this involvement in this uh, fascinating world. And I'm also one of the writers on the Fuji IO uh, website. And we have a category there uh, specifically aimed at the Raspberry Pi. Um, and I can only... Uh, um, ask you to build, to experiment, um, to have fun. Um, there should also be in this sentence, have frustration, because if you start with electronics, uh, it's a new world, you will get frustrated because something doesn't work or you blow something up. I destroyed a few LEDs or, or uh, little uh, LED segment displays, but you have 100 LEDs for a few euros. so. It's not that bad. It's not that you uh, ruin your PC of a few thousand uh, euros. No, um, I didn't manage to destroy a Raspberry Pi yet, and I've done crazy stuff. I've put uh, five voltage on a ground pin and stuff like that. They flip, they do very strange things, but you just unpower them, and next time, with some luck, uh, there's nothing uh, wrong with your with your board. So, they are really powerful in any sense uh, of the uh, of the word so they are powerful in processor they have a lot of memory they have a lot of uh, graphic power but they also have a lot of uh, electronics uh, power now um indeed i can uh, also give you uh, give a price um if you do a tweet uh, about the project that you want to make or that you have in mind or that one day, if you have time, you want to make, uh, do a tweet uh, with the hashtags Java and Raspberry Pi and Polish Jugs together. Um, and then the organizers of these jug will select uh, three winners. Um, and the first one gets the book and a pie. And then we have two more books also to give away. That's it. I have seen a lot of things passing by in the chat and in the comments. So I hope someone has a list with questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, the activity was uh, uh, so big that it overflowed our uh, uh, comments list. <laughs> but I, I'm hoping we, we will manage to bring all them uh, up. Uh, I don't know if we have uh, time to uh, answer all those questions, but uh, the activity was uh, fabulous, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and I uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I um, um, I wish that you will help us to uh, select the most. Definitely, uh, I'm very curious to product. see what what uh, what will uh, yeah. What the ideas are. <laughs> uh, I see a question about the book. The book is uh, available via webtechie.be, my, my uh, website. There you have the books um, page, and you can either buy it as an ebook uh, via LeanPub, um, and it's also available in paper uh, through the Elector uh, website. Yes, okay. And another question. Is Raspberry Pi Zero uh, is enough to run Java smoothly? Um, I think so. I've not done a lot of Java testing yet, but uh, for Pi4j, for the library, uh, it is tested on the zero. So um, there is only one problem, 
with the zero is that it is an ARM v6 processor. So um, you have these different generations of ARM processors and the OpenJDK 11, which is pre-installed on Raspberry Pi OS is not compatible with ARM v6. So that will give you an error. But for every error, there is a solution, of course. Um, there is a version available of, um, let me go to the website. So there is a version of Java available for ARM v6, and it's provided by Azul. So um, if you download it from the Azul website and uh, install it, uh, and zip it actually, um, and then link Java to this, uh, this version, then you have uh, Java 11 on an ARM VSS, so even on the on the small Raspberry Pis. Okay. Smoothly depends on what you actually are doing. Eh? <laughs> um, the, the comparison I've done between Spring and Quarkus, for instance, um, I got challenged by Adam Bin um, because I had done a blog post about Spring on Raspberry Pi, and I mentioned somewhere just in the comments, it takes 60 seconds to start up. Um, and then he challenged me, yeah, what about Quarkus? And I think it's about, uh, it's a lot faster. So it also depends a bit on the, um, on, on, on the framework you choose and what dependencies you use. Huh? So if you look into the comparison, tip, 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 tip. Um, so a spring jar takes 35 seconds to start on the Raspberry Pi 4 and nine seconds for Quarkus. So there is a difference also in frameworks. Yeah, I guess there's, there was a, also a question uh, for the Graal VM. Maybe mm -hmm. that would change anything in startup time? Uh, yes. Definitely, but um, I have to be honest, I didn't have time enough the last months to check how it's evolving because when I wrote this article about Quarkus, um, I also compiled it to uh, Graal, with Graal VM to a native application for me PC, and it started in incredibly fast, 0 0.06 seconds, but I didn't manage to compile it for Raspberry Pi at that time. Um, and I think there are um, there is work ongoing to have uh, Graal VM also for 32-bit and for Raspberry Pi, but I'm not sure how far they are. Um, and that's also a bit, um, it's one world. It's also what uh, Gluon is doing with Java FX. They also want to have na uh, uh, smooth native compilation because um, it's native applications that you need to push to the Apple and the, and the Google uh, store. So uh, also there, there's a big involvement uh, ongoing. So it's definitely something to, to keep, a, keep an eye on. But I have no answer now for GraalVM on the Raspberry Pi. If someone wants to set it up and has some info for it, Definitely do it. Um, uh, I'm also looking for new articles for the Fuji site about uh, Java on Raspberry or on Embedded. So if anyone has an ID or an interesting blog about this subject, please uh, let me know. Okay. Uh, another question. Python mm -hmm. versus Java, what is better? Um, the battle of the languages. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have no preference. It's um, you have to pick the tool that you know, and that is the best fit for the job. Um, I'm a Java developer. That's also why I started doing Java on Raspberry Pi. But one of the examples in the book didn't really, I didn't really find the best way to control a chip to do something. So I call from my Java, a Python file to do something. So it's, is there a best language? No. Um, there is the language which fits your needs and that you know. And in some cases that Java, where I definitely choose Java is for the interface. I once created a Pong game with Python and it was a disaster. I didn't like how you built a user interface with Python. And if I see what you can do with Java FX, it's so smooth, it's so easy, it is Java. 
it is really uh, it, it are Java objects, so you you use them just like you'd use a, a database object or whatever, um, and you do the styling with CSS. So if you ever done some website development and you know CSS, then you can style uh, Java FX applications. So is Python better? Probably for some stuff, but I just love Java more. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer, thanks. Another question. Uh, which Java version is first working on RPI? Uh, all. Ah, first. Well, actually, uh, until the previous one, uh, we were working with Java 8. Um, now I have Java 11 is pre-installed now, but I have compiled from sources Java also on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm going to find it back. It's somewhere here in the, in the articles. Um, so I think it takes 45 to 50 minutes to have a Raspberry Pi 4 for gigabyte, pulling all the sources from GitHub from Java and compiling it. And you end up with Java, I think it was 16 or 17 running on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so um, I have no idea if uh, lower than eight will work, but if you're still on eight, you should move. <laughs> 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 because this year, normally we have Java 17, which is then a long-term supported version, I think. So um, yeah, even Java 11 is outdated. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Another question. But, uh, there's one thing I can say, I, did, I didn't mention, I think. Um, uh, one of the examples I show was using Java FX 15 together with Java 11 on the Raspberry Pi. So keep in mind, if you are using Java FX and you want to use the latest things of Java FX, you can use the latest one from Gluon, but combine it with the default Java 11, that works. So it's not that Java FX version X needs Java version X, they can uh, they live uh, next to each other. It's not that there are some breaking changes in, in one of them. That's great, okay, thanks. Uh, how many vendors provides its implementation of Java to Robsbury? Um, as we yeah. have them a lot lately. Yeah, there are, there are more and more. Um, I don't know all of them, but um, so you have OpenGDK, which is pre-installed, uh, and you have definitely Azul and Liberica. They have versions, um, and there are there will be more, but I I'm not sure. I think I'm not sure about Adopt Open GDK if you can find them there. But on the FuJ site, uh, there is a lot of info about uh, distributions of uh, Java. Mm, I have to check it. And if uh, I will uh, extend that question to uh, if there's are any vendors that provide additional value, so for example, is is Azul the Ferrari for the uh, Raspberry Pi? As, as, um, as the, what they what they especially do, and I think it's both Azul and Liberica who do that, um, um, is you can have a minified version of the GDK. For instance, if you want to have something which is very small, and I think that they can go to a, a, a Java runtime of, of 10, 20 megabytes, I think, it, then they can do that. And if you buy a license uh, from them, they will also uh, support you to adapt your Java version, your runtime version, um, to fit into your project. So if you have a specific, even if you would have an, another processor, if you would building a, an electronic uh, device, you can go with it, this device um, to this to, to Azul or to, um, to Bellsoft actually it is, um, and say, this is my processor I want to use and I want to have Java. And they can say, yeah, we can build you something for it or we can even support you and, and optimize it and do some, so they can run the complete Java test set on this processor and tell you it works or not work. And uh, also for Java FX, so uh, Gluon is um, the open source maintainer of OpenGFX, uh, but they also provide uh, a license um, that you can, as a developer, ask them for support. Um, now, Gluon has a very uh, open strategy. I have been uh, experimenting a lot with Java FX on the Raspberry Pi, and I have been bugging them with questions, I think, uh, 
they, they already have some red light when I start mailing them. Um, but they are they are assistants. If um, if you have a good idea and you want to test something and you share it again with the community, then they will assist you. I, I, this this app I have shown you with the resistor calculator. I had this stupid idea of let me create a Java FX application and build it into native uh, applications with GitHub Actions. Actually, it's Gluon who finished this project and made the, the application is published in the app stores with their license and their secret keys and stuff like that. So they actually published it um, uh, into the app store. So they are great contribution to this to this open source world. Super. Uh, okay, another question, uh, long one, <laughs> uh, regarding integration with electronics directly using GPIO. Uh, yep. Do you also have a Java API or rather yep. no resources here? It's a Java API. Uh, let me show you if I... Oh, come on. If I can show you an example here. Um, so actually, this is all uh, code. Um, so this is, for instance, a, a bit longer example. Oh, a bit bigger. So this is a bit a longer example. So this is um, using this Py4j library. So you set up uh, a controller. This is the GPIO controller. And then you say, yeah, I want to use an output pin. So this is, for instance, to control a LED. Um, and it's connected on GPIO 1. And it starts with a high state. So it will be on as soon as this pin is initialized. Um, and then you have some options here. So you can put it to low. You can toggle it if you're not aware of the current state. Uh, then you have some pulses and stuff like that. So these are, these are the simple things for just controlling a LED. But then you have uh, serial communication. You have uh, all these other types of, of stuff that you can do with the controls. So actually, this is all uh, inside Java, um, really as a Java API. So indeed, Py4j, uh, if you use that into your project, um, then you can have this uh, this kind of uh, interface. The the quickest example to show if you are interested is uh, the the version two of the Py4j website huh? uh, still in development. It's a snapshot version. This version two that we have at this moment, but it works. Huh? Um, I have it here on a, on a Raspberry Pi running. Um, and this is all explaining the very basics, how you get started, what dependency you need, um, and then how you toggle it. So this is all plain Java code. Uh, you don't have to worry about what's underneath it. You don't need to do any Python stuff or C stuff. That's all handled uh, by the library, uh, which includes uh, a GNI uh, to call this uh, native uh, code. OK. Super, thank you. Another question. I know uh, you can run containers in exa uh, example Docker on uh, Raspberry. Uh, so the question is if there are any already prepared Java containers for ARM? No. The, hmm. That's a good idea. Um, what um, Robert Savage did, so Robert Savage is the creator of Py4j. Um, he has created, uh, so to do native compilation of our library, he has created these Docker images. Oops. And these Docker images, mm, what has he done here? I have to look it up, but um, if you look into this Py4j Docker project, here you can see how he um, created Dockers to do cross compilation. So they these Dockers can compile ARM code. That's the that's the main idea. So it's not my specialty, but uh, Robert has created this and. Uh, if you are really interested into do in Docker, how you can create uh, a Raspberry Pi-like Docker, you will probably find it here. Okay. You can also okay. run Docker on the Raspberry Pi, but that's vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, okay, another question. Uh, why uh -huh. are you using Java FX instead of some web frameworks based on HTML? Um, because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen a discussion, I think it was today of Gerrit Grunwald, who was uh, asking himself or yesterday, am I getting too old that I don't like web frameworks? And I have the same, well, it's just, you are inside Java. So I have my Java application doing some database stuff or reading files or whatever. Why would I add, another layer why would i add a browser and a web framework and then have some kind of web socket communication or whatever to control what's on the website while i can do everything in java fx if my let is turned on or off is just binding the state to my java fx property for the background color for instance so i don't have to leave my java Everything is inside there, um, and and it is just very light. You just have your Java application. Uh, if you strip everything from your Raspberry Pi, uh, that you don't have this interface, but only your your Java uh, VIX interface, uh, it starts smooth. It's it's reliable. You, of course, you can do it with web frameworks if you are a, a web de a web developer and and. That's your stuff. That's how you want to build user interfaces. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> but for me, Java VIX and, and the background Java, the backend Java is yeah a perfect combination. Yeah, the, 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 these are very strange days that you can uh, create the thinner client in the FX Java than in the yeah. JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the browser. And, there is now a whole discussion going on because JFrog is closing their, their repositories and stuff like that. And on the other hand, today you had this whole security news. I don't know if you heard about it, but someone, a researcher, published NPM packages with yeah, names yeah. of someone else, which got pulled automatically into projects because there is no check on who is pu pushing NPM packages. Yeah. I don't think that can happen in Java and in the Maven repository. So if you look into this Maven repository, this this amazing, uh, un endless, <laughs> uh, endless uh, list of, of 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 libraries that you have there, um, then yeah, again that's a proof for Java. Eh? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm not really sure if it, it's, it isn't isn't it impossible uh, on the <laughs> uh, report. It did not happen yet. Let's call yeah. it like that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, is there uh, oh Graal VM? We um, uh, yeah. I'm not sure. I have to investigate further. Um, uh, when I did this blog post about um, uh, comparing Spring to uh, Quarkus on Raspberry Pi. I also mentioned I didn't succeed in building Graal VM, and some guys from Graal VM answered at that moment, it's something we need to investigate and, and push. So maybe it's done in the meantime, I'm not sure. It's uh, definitely something to, to take a look at. Yeah, okay. Another question, what Java library you suggest to use for GPIO and uh, <coughs> Py therapy? Um, as I am, uh, now, one of the members of the Pi4j project, that's the one I was... <laughs> if you want to get started, if you have not, never done it before, and you're uh, willing to take a little risk, then immediately jump into this version 2. Uh, immediately go to this uh, v2.py4j.com. Um, if you go into the getting started section, um, I'm writing on this part, so it's not finished, but it will tell you how you get started with the Raspberry Pi, what you need to do, how you burn your operating system to the SD card, um, how you test your Java, then uh, how you can even use Visual Studio Code uh, on the Raspberry Pi if you want to program on the, uh, Visual, uh, on the Raspberry Pi itself. And then you have this first project. If you already have done these three pages, um, then you have a very good base point to start with. 
So yeah. Okay. Uh, there, uh, no. I guess that without no. the context. No. no. So um, uh, the GPIOs, so they are either a zero or three point three. You have five volts uh, on a pin, uh, or on two pins even, I think. If you need a reason to buy my book, it's this image. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the 40 pins of uh, of the Raspberry Pi. Um, and you see that you have two times five volts uh, on this side. Yeah, on this side. But they are, cannot be controlled. So. Um, how how oops how do we um, control then a five volt uh, electronics components? In many cases, they also work with three point three. Then it's a no brainer. And in other cases, you have um, I forget the name of course. You have the small components who take a three volt three on one side and output five volt on the other side. So you have the small components uh, that you can put in between. So you can if you have five volt um, devices that you want to use with the Raspberry Pi, you have this little board uh, to put in between. Okay, thanks. Another one, what about GC? Uh, which one would be the choice for the Raspberry Pi? <laughs> Uh, what do uh, you mean with GC? Uh, garbage collector. I garbage guess. collector. I didn't compare them. I cannot answer this one. Maybe absolutely. Um, um, <laughs> ah, but 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 um, there is news, and news in the sense of really news. Um, uh, t -t 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 here. Someone compiled someone being Alexei. Yeah, Alexei Shapiriev. Yeah. That. And he tweeted this off four hours ago. J JDK 17 on the Raspberry Pi 3 with very, very small Who's pauses. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, which garbage collector? I don't know, but let's just all jump to Java 17. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I got old uh, Raspberry mm. Pi 1B board. Is it worth to start with, or should I look for the new version? Um, I don't have such a board, so I cannot <laughs> tell you. <laughs> My oldest board is a 3. 1.2, so I think it's dating from 2014. And there it works if I install the uh, ASL GDK, which is for ARM v6. Um, but for an 1B board, let me know, try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, another one. Is there some kind of emulator? which we doesn't require attaching it to the hardware and let play with the lights and buttons. Mm. Um, we have some IDs for version 2 of Pi 4G for that, but um, you have that for Arduino, definitely. You can design your, your um, Arduino C code in some web tools and it will Acts and show you everything like you are doing it in in. I don't think for uh, for Raspberry Pi or Java, no. But it's a great idea for version two of the library. Yeah. Another one. What about testing such setups? Is it possible to write integration tests, for example? This, this is a good programmer. He want to start with a test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Integration test, well, it's actually a challenge we have for the Pi4j project. We have this ID, it's, it's um, uh, Robert's ID. Um, to do this. And it's an Arduino Duo on one side and a Raspberry Pi on the other side and is to have a communication in between both of them. And then uh, if we put a pin high on the Raspberry Pi that we check on the Arduino, indeed, is it detecting this pin change? So it's also something, um, maybe a student project, we have no idea because it will take some time, is that we have um, 
two devices testing each other. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, then you have the issue if there is an error on which side it is, but <laughs> that's uh, something to investigate later. <clears throat> Uh, for integration testing, no, I have no uh, no real idea at this moment. But it's definitely something we are investigating for the Pi4j project. Okay, uh, one one question from my side uh, uh, yeah. uh, on this moment: Do you know of any uh, usage of Raspberry Pi in live critical uh, systems or something like that? Is it is it? Um, that's a bit difficult to know, and um, we there are some rumors that there are even washing machines with uh, some kind of fancy interface which have a Raspberry Pi inside. Um, but I don't know why, but you don't see a lot of advertisement of companies Raspberry Pi inside, um, which is a bit a pity. Um, we have done some consultancy uh, things for this, but um, there are some medical devices that we are on the search for. We know that they exist, but we don't know where. <laughs> so um, they say they have, the Raspberry Pi Foundation says they, they have sold a lot of these compute modules. And I can only see professional use for of those boards because you have to stick them on your own hardware. Um, so hmm, I don't know. Uh, Oracle has been on an uh, event last year before the Corona, of course, with a supercluster with 1,024 Raspberry Pis in one big uh, case uh, to show distributed uh, Linux systems. That's something I know of. But um, no, if someone has devices that he knows that they exist, we are looking for them because we have this future projects page. But yeah, we only, okay, this is one we know that's a hobby project from someone, but we want to have more here and definitely professional things. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, another question, is there some good embedded Java persistence? <laughs> I, 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 I like the H2 database. Eh? Uh, I don't know if you know it's 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 uh, it's a, it's inside your Java. Um, you can store it to a local file, of course. So if you restart that, you still have it there. I have th that's what I've used uh, in one of the examples to to store states of buttons, for instance. Uh, um, I love it because it's so compact, it starts so fast, and it's, and again, it's real Java. Uh, but you can install, of course, MySQL or, or other stuff. Yeah, I guess the H2 is a great. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. It's a, yeah. Uh, okay, I saw there is a possibility to install Java Micro Edition on Raspberry Pi instead of Classic. <laughs> as far as I know, this Micro Edition. I'm wondering, is it still alive? Yeah. I have. Um, on the other hand, you have the, the evolution of Java itself, of, of the, the big one, um, which just starts and works so well on, on, on Raspberry Pi that I'm wondering, do they still yeah. have benefit of this macro edition? On the other hand, you have Azul and, and other providers who can build you a custom Java runtime for a specific device. So I think this micro edition is not really alive. I don't know. I've been looking into it a few months ago and, and it seemed all out, uh, old information. The Oracle is still behind it, I guess, but um, I don't, I never seen it in, in the field somewhere. Okay. Thank and uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, uh, Raspberry Pi Pico is something else. Uh, Raspberry Pi Pico is a microcontroller, so that's in the family of Arduino. So, don't think if someone managed to get Java on it, I'm <laughs> sure would like to know. Um, but no, I don't think so. No. Uh, another question. I've uh, we've seen a performance of game with this. <laughs> Right or sprite? Yeah, swiping the screen. Let's say yeah, screen. Yeah. I would create. I guess so. Um, 
I think it's more related to how your Java project itself is created. But I have a small application that I'm working on uh, on the Raspberry Pi, which switches from screens using top pane and, and uh, uh, loading different views. I have no performance issue at all. Okay. Um, for such cases, it's, it's easy to just create something very fast. Don't put a lot of it of work in it, but just try it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another one. Uh, what is the memory, the memory consumption? consumption? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if I can show you something. Not really. Uh, don't have anything running at this moment. I know. Um, I have this Java FX application uh, for a project for a client, and I think it's about 40 megabytes, and the CPU stays under 10%, and it's on a Raspberry Pi 3. So it's very low. You can do a lot more on this board. OK, next question. Is there uh, in JFX uh, with Touch screen on RPI support or for just scroll list? Hmm. <laughs> no idea. That's someone. <laughs> someone has to try this out <laughs> because indeed you have these touch screens. Um, I now have bought for a, a home project a new touch screen. It has five point touch, but then yeah. hmm. okay. So another question yeah, to, to try out. Is Raspberry Pi working only with dedicated sensors? No, or no. <laughs> because what I use is, is actually an Arduino kit. I have some Arduino kits. Um, and like I say, so this, um, this small distance sensor, uh, it's not laying here. So this, these two eyes, it's like a bat. So it works like a, a bat, a flying bat. So it sends a sens um, um, ultrason sound si signal. And it reflects and comes back. So actually, these sensors are designed to work on five volt. But when using them with the Raspberry Pi on 3.3, it also works. So some of these sensors, they are really not limited to certain uh, voltages. Um, so it's definitely not that you need to buy a Raspberry Pi electronics kit because they don't even exist. It's really standard components. Um, for LEDs, you will need a resistor to go to the correct current. Uh, but yeah, it's it's all basic components, yeah. Uh, let me just ask you an additional question because we have almost the uh, 7 p.m. Do you have mm -hmm. uh, some more time? Because we have a lot of more questions. <laughs> uh, and we still have people in the room, okay? <laughs> mm. yeah, I have some more time. To be honest. So quite a bit. Uh, can quite you repeat? I, I did mention you. I didn't hear 150 you. people are working us at the moment, so still Whoa. quite out here. I, I've done a lot of I, uh, some some conferences in the last months. I think this is the biggest audience then. <laughs> yeah, people are hungry because we we didn't have uh, much uh, occasions to, to yeah. meet. Uh, it, actually, it was a bad timing with my book. It uh, my book got published, the paper one, in March, two thousand twenty. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was going to do some jugs in Belgium, live, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but, but worst worst timing or best timing because uh, we had we had uh, uh, the, we had a lot of time to do some side jobs on yeah. the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, yeah indeed, um, and and even in my previous job because of Corona, they shut down the company completely for seven weeks. Well, so I was at home seven weeks and my kids had to study at home. So I had, yeah, we're busy with the kids, but I think we redecorated and reorganized the whole house. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I did some more blogging and then writing on Raspberry Pi. So definitely, yeah, it was a very strange year, but on the one side it gave opportunities and on the other side, yeah, yeah, it's Corona. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So we have some more time for our questions yeah. Or, or yeah okay. Um, I have uh, my home project is the biggest one. So this this touch uh, controller that I created for my son. Um, this 
so yeah, with with these screens eh? um it's the biggest because it combines both a q um an arduino a raspberry pi electronics uh, some uh, some relay boards but the electronics interfaces are rather limited so it's controlling eight relays and then some serial communication to the arduino to do the the led strips um, and then I have some projects, uh, professional, but they are uh, professional, so I cannot mention them all. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, as you can read in these examples that I created with Quarkus and 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 um, uh, and Spring, any Java project will work. So um, if you want to build your own uh, home domotic system or some kind like that there are even java frameworks which are popular on on raspberry pi uh, which are created with java uh, and that's uh, and some people are not aware of it and how about right. how about projects where many of uh, raspberry pis would be used a network of them for example um uh, if you do want to do home automation, you have PyDome, eh? that, and that's actually written in Java. It even got a Duke's Choice Award, so that's uh, one big project I know of. And then you have this Oracle uh, Raspberry Pi cluster. Will I look at say? Isn't this an amazing project? <laughs> <laughs> so these are all Raspberry Pis. Great one. I, I thought it was 1024, but I read, read here it's 1060. Does it need additional cooling or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, and it's to demonstrate yeah, how you can cluster Oracle systems on, on a lot of devices. Wow. So if you if anyone wants to build something like this, there are a lot of uh, people tweeting uh, and, and sharing uh, 3D printing projects to build your own cluster that you, for instance, can group 10 Raspberry Pis into one um, rack unit or two rack units, I think, um, <clears throat> with um, with uh, some hard drives and stuff like that. So definitely an, a lot of inspiration out there. That may, that may produce some Bitcoins even, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not into that world. It, it consumes yeah. too much electricity. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about a uh, first-person view system, uh, <clears throat> which is used in the remote control models? Uh, have no, you ever no. set up this project? No, no, no. The, the problem would be latency, you think, or, or, or something no, else? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. That okay. will be for someone else <laughs> to answer. Okay. Next question. Uh, just let us uh, Sorry, find I'm another one. Scrolling, scrolling down, but uh, there is more uh, more of the discussion in the comments rather than new questions. Yeah. We have a very active uh, crowd today, so we're very happy about that. Yeah, but you give them a prize if they are active. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Don't, don't ruin it. it. Don't ruin I, it. I, I, hope, I hope that's not the only reason. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We believe in them. We we we, we do. We still do believe if that it's just yeah, yeah. or hunger for knowledge. Okay. Um, I see a question. Can Raspberry Pi read input data from, for example, temperature module like in Arduino? Yes, that's what I've done actually. Um, so that's one of the examples so i used an arduino um with a light sensor or something like that can i find it back so um here you have a setup like that. So it's an Arduino is actually, so what is not available on a Raspberry Pi is an analog pin. So um, it are all digital pins. So a digital pin means it's either a one or a zero. An analog pin can read values from zero uh, up till uh, 1024. 
So if you connect a light sensor um, and you uh, come closer with your hand so it gets darker, then you will see that this value increments from 1024 uh, to something lower. Um, so you have either chips that you can connect to a Raspberry Pi to do that, that it converts an analog signal into a digital, or you can use an Arduino, which has, I think most of the time, five of these pins. And then you can just use a serial communication to get this from, from uh, an Arduino. Um, and then I used a Java VIX chart to display these values. So indeed you can use an Arduino um, to get the values um, free a serial and do something with it in Java. So that's possible, yes. Okay, and we have a question about HTML and makes ah, the right. <clears throat> The last time I used WebView, it didn't work on Raspberry Pi uh, because um, there are some special things in Java FX which really need to be implemented for the specific hardware, being a video, audio, um, and WebView. And I'm not sure about the state of the WebView in Java FX. Um, what would be a good idea if there are people who really need this and want to do a project with it is that they uh, buy for long time support to Gluon. And if there are enough people who need this, um, then they can even push some parts of the development forward or can, uh, of course, help in this is open source project, OpenGFX, just like OpenGDK. Uh, they are on GitHub and everyone can look into the code. And if he is a specialist in Raspberry Pi, for instance, or in this uh, embedded Linux, and can assist in this uh, platform specific uh, implementations, I, he's more than welcome to do so in these communities. Eh? Okay, another one. Uh, another one has to wait a cure muted. And I am talking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I think that uh, we are done with questions. Oh, no, yeah. there's another one. Uh, is there any ready to use built-in SDK that no really supports to USB heat? Hmm, no idea. No. Ah, okay. Real-time Java. Real-time Java, yeah. yeah. Um, Especially with the garbage collector, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, then I think you have to talk to an Azure, Azure, for instance, because they have this Zulu, I think it's called, this Zulu version of the of GDK, which is really for real-time kind of stuff. They use it, for instance, in bank and, and, and this money transfer stuff. Um, I don't think for Raspberry Pi, then you would re need a real-time operating system, I think. Um, but that's really low level, so I'm not going that way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, can I use Raspberry Pi in professional applications such as industrial <coughs> process automation? Uh, that's where you have the compute module. Eh? So um, that's the ID. and. Uh, compute. So that's where you have these modules for. Eh? So that's the idea. So this is a full Raspberry Pi 4. You can choose how many memory you have on them. Um, on the back, you have two of these connectors. <clears throat> and the idea is that you indeed combine it with a baseboard that fits into your uh, device that you are building, um, and then you design the, the connections around it. Or if it's just controlling, if you're familiar enough with Linux, it is a Linux device. If you can set it up to be reliable and that you don't have taken too much dependencies into your Linux, uh, that it becomes slow or, or has some memory issues, then definitely it is uh, very powerful, so why not use it for such kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay. How about the drivers and using SPI, SCI? Yeah, they are there. 
Uh, so we have SPI. Uh, what did I do in my book with SPI? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I should reread it myself again. Uh, but, but I guess for for each uh, question here, uh, the answer is in the book. So the answer the, is yeah, easy by, by the book. By the book. <laughs> so uh, the, actually, this this uh, eight by eight um, LED matrix that I used uh, showed in also in the video. Um, it has a chip and it is controlled with SPI. So from Java. So. Right. That's part of the libraries, indeed. We, I can't, cannot see any more questions. If there are some, please post it right then, right now, because we are coming to the, the end of the, uh, our today's meetup. Okay. So it's a bit uh, time for summaries. So first thing first, at the very beginning, we had a contest for uh, to win a Raspberry Pi starter kit. And the question was, uh, was where about uh, our sponsor, Mobica company? And please, if you are still with us, Conrad, please contact us on, on leaders at barshava.juk.pl. You are, uh, by our knowledge, the first one who answered this correctly, even though you made a small typo in uh, BitGosh <laughs> uh, name, but we know BitGosh is and, the hardest. And, and that's, why, that, that's why I additionally hate you. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, but th that's our only point we, we kind of like it. Uh, so please contact us here. Uh, so that was the first opportunity to uh, to win a Raspberry Pi. The second one, please go to the survey under this link, fill out the survey, and I think we'll give you a, kind of forty eight hours to do so. Then we will close the the survey, and we just pick up two people. Um, but with the best of the, the feedback you gave us to win another two sets kits of, uh, of Raspberry Pi. Yes, and, and the link will be provided with the, our social media, all the of, of all, all uh, jugs. Exactly, exactly. It will be, uh, be posted as well. That's the the second thing. If exactly, thank you very much, Frank. Uh, this is the third, uh, third um, opportunity to win our prizes. The Raspberry um, for kit from uh, Mobica and Jukes and ebooks from Frank. So uh, there was a question of how how much time do we have? We will have I think today is eleventh, so end of the day of twenty first, ten days. So you have you can peacefully just think about the idea. Uh, it, it's not a flash contest. It takes some takes take some time to to think about the best idea you have. And we will provide the details on the contest on our social media. So, so other than that, what you can see here, we will uh, provide more details on our Twitter, Facebook account. So uh, just follow us. But the contest itself, it will be on Twitter. No. Yeah. And sorry, sorry to interrupt you. If you don't have a Twitter account, you can always ask us to re retweet <laughs> your question, <laughs> which will be sent by the email, for yeah. example. You can find us on Slack, for example, if there is uh, something like that. Uh, find us on Slack, and we'll try to figure something out. But maybe we'll post it uh, uh, in your uh, behalf. OK, so that's the third thing. And I, re I already you see a GitHub uh, contribution. so. Very, very nice. <laughs> uh, Super. Well, just for the summary, uh, on average, there was there was a lot around uh, 170 uh, viewers live. So uh, great, great crowd. We are very happy that uh, you all uh, were with us. But the most active ones, and uh, as promised, we'll um, reward you the most active people with JetBrains licenses. And there will, as you could see, because now I think the question Q and A uh, session was longer than the presentation itself, and that's that's really great because the presentation you, it's very very often recorded and you can uh, watch it online right now. Yeah. But yeah. the question that you can uh, ask to our uh, speaker, it's only one one time opportunity. So yeah, that's that's bring, that, that's bring unique value. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's so seven people we found that were the most active ones. So if you find your, your Nick over there, please contact us. It's a lot of people, but as you could see, a lot of people were active today, which we are very thankful for. And um, that's uh, that's the fourth, I think, 
opportunity to, to win prizes today. So as someone mentioned, lots of prizes, but we are very happy that we could uh, make this happen today. And to, when I'm thinking about making this happen, I also wanted to thank to Piotr uh, Przybył, uh, who I think around November first mentioned about uh, doing something on Twitter and to, together with Frank. So he was the, we just, we had, had it in here, yeah, but uh, you know, we needed a push, push and Piotr pushed us pretty good. That's why we are here today. Um, is there anything more from my side? I don't think so. I'm just looking if there are uh, more questions, but I don't think so. Uh, can you provide I know, more? I know, I know we had I know we had some activity from Dublin, Jack. Uh, oh yeah, there? I promise. Yeah. There was yeah, was we like... yeah. So we have something from Dublin. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hello. So greetings from to Dublin Paul. too. Maybe maybe we we will have to think something uh, uh, to extend from Poland. Maybe more <laughs> Europe yeah. jugs together. Europe jugs or... jugs together. Yeah. Uh, by the way. Yeah, there are some articles yep. from Ihor also on the Fuji site, who was also doing Java on Raspberry Pi. So uh, it's Great all one, here. One, one small world. Yeah, so greetings to Ihor. OK. This is the email once more. Someone uh, uh, asked for that. Uh, we will try to provide those details once more on our social media, so if you missed it. All, all of our destination on the YouTube channels of our, of our jokes, those recordings will be available just after the, uh, the end of the session. So don't worry, it won't get missing. And I think we that's all. I'm looking if, if everybody, every of our Duke leaders are there to just wave goodbye. I cannot see one of them, but I'll just... Tick, tick, yeah. Tick. yeah, yeah. Uh, my, uh, I have a, a proposition uh, uh, on each our live sessions when we are uh, just uh, uh, on site uh, seeing the uh, speaker has the applause at the end, and I think you deserve the applause here. And in in that uh, limited uh, audition, we can uh, provide the applause for you. So. Big applause for Frank. Thanks a lot. Thank and thanks a lot for organizing and, and, and combining all these jugs. It's really amazing. Yeah, we think so too. Uh, thank you for everybody, every organizer, because those are people that uh, are behind all the events that you can watch yeah. on your uh, local jugs. But now we, we were able to, to do something, something together. So, uh, out for you guys too as well yeah okay super thank you very much uh, in these difficult times there are pros and cons as you said uh, frank uh, the pros is that we can make it together uh, i guess if the, there wouldn't be pandemia we wouldn't think about it and now that's that's something uh, yeah. good that the uh, good uh, take or take away from that uh, and uh, thank you very much for your attendance, for your presentation. Thank everyone who attended, uh, the viewers for the activity. Thanks for the uh, th th thanks leaders for the organ for the organizing. And I guess uh, that's not the last time we meet. I guess okay. we asked you in the in the in the survey if if it's something you liked. So if the answer will be. Yes, we will be back, and if the answer is no, we will be back together probably as well because we just really enjoyed what we did here. Yeah. Okay, I think that's that's all, Foytek. Everything we can. Yep. Oh, so thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Uh, thank you for for Frank for being here tonight, and see you next time. Okay. Good evening. Bye bye. Bye.